just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another Packer Up, boys. And uh, it's time to open a beer can. A beer can or a can of beer. <laughs> oh, that tastes like the weekend, baby. That tastes like the weekend. And I'm not talking about the singer. I'm talking about actual <laughs> weekend. Make sure to grab, grab a case of bloke beer from your local. It's a beautiful, easy drinking lager. Goes down an absolute treat. And it is the beer of rugby league. But the great... Shandor is back. What's going hey, on, brother? Thank you. How are you, my man? Mate, very, very good. Mate, where you been? What's been going on? <laughs> mate, I've been travelling around Australia, um, recently in America, but yeah, just made the move to Sydney, so yep. I've come full circle out in the west. Oh, yeah. East in the west. Are so. you living out west? Yeah, I'm living out west. <laughs> Holy heckers. What what prompted out west? Because that's where the air locker is? Yeah, so I've just set up a home base performance hub out in Rouse Hill, so mm. mate, I think... Last time I lived there was back in the Penrith days, out, oh, out, out in Windsor. It. So yeah, stop it, <laughs> Maddie. How you been, bros? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to have you back, Shandor. Yeah, no, because no, he's not actually a shaded out character <laughs> in a street, street Fighter uh, video game where you've got to unlock him. He, the lighting. We've just got to work on a bit of lighting yes, issues currently. It'll be, it will be will be good next week. It's it's not. The, I'm looking at myself now. It's. If, you, if, if there was three of me, it wouldn't look so bad. But then I <laughs> then I put you two on. <laughs> it's so bad. Or? <laughs> Mate, because in real life right now, you're looking dark as. Oh, I really? can barely see you. <laughs> um, mate, went to America. What are you doing in America? Speak to me. Open our first air locker. Holy. Mate, unreal. What was that like? San Diego. It was so cool. Mm. I think one San Diego. Of, yeah, San Diego. Uh, one of the greatest cities in the world. Uh, the Germans discovered it. <laughs> really? Actually oh. means a whale's vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use that next time I'm there. <laughs> but no, it was good, man. Like, to open up in America was one of those moments uh, you would have experienced the same thing with your business and mm. just getting there, like, oh, wow, how, how have we gotten to this point? But yeah, it was really yeah. cool. We are really well received. And even in that week, you know what it's like? You spend some time in Vegas. It's just a different world. I had uh, the number one college basketball athlete in the Western Conference come through. Mm. Next day, you had the billionaire CEO of ClickUp. And you just it's just crazy the people you meet. So yeah. the start of a big journey is pretty cool. It just America, when you get over there, you realize how small we are in oh, Australia. You're even San like, Diego, it's not that big. But their population is... Um, you know, 12 and a half million. It's nearly half of Australia's population. Yeah. It's not even a big city. It's crazy. Insane. Insane. And so what's the what's the plan for Western Sydney? Like, what's the, is it to open more? Is it to open less? Yeah, I guess uh, where we started, Newcastle, that was our home base. And mm. we've got five studios there. They're all going really well. Um, so now to support Sydney. But for me, like, I do all my fancy title performance director, I do all the programming, the coaching education, but I kind of worked out of an office. So yeah. it's good for me to be back in a studio and build a little bit of a hub out there. And it's such a growing area. I'm, I just moved to a suburb, Box Hill, and there's houses everywhere. So it's booming out there. Man, how good, how yeah. good. Uh, don't forget, guys, this episode of Packer Up Boys brought to you by Sportsbet. Give us a follow on feed. Uh, the great Dan Orange, he has admitted to being a Nepo baby. He literally admitted to it. A what baby? Um, <laughs> a Nepo baby. So basically um, uh, nep nepotism. Oh, right, right. Yeah, Nepo baby. That's basically people that have really rich parents that are connected that get a leg up in life. Yeah, right. And so Dan Orange, also known as Dan Gorange in AFL uh, circles, he uh, he's the Nepo baby of Sportsbet. So he's with Sportsbet, but they make ads for him to try to get followers to pump up his numbers. <laughs> Whereas bloke, we're battlers. We get the job done. We don't need no help from anyone. Anyway, so he's admitted to being a Nepo baby, uh, Dan Orange. <laughs> and um, and I think that's funny. It's it's It's... It's like a you go through the, the the time like literally the thousands of years of histories of of leaders that lose the support of the people because the people support bloke and the numbers reflect that and this is the this is the uh, the calm before the storm for Dan Orange where he thinks he's a bit bigger than his boots he's become a dictator where he he literally said he runs sports bet and so he's <laughs> he's lost his connection with the people and that's when the people rise up. And you see public uh, public displays of let's just say removing him from power. Take back the power. Uh, the only difference is is he has no power. He has no power. Uh, very unathletic, not powerful guy. Look, can, can <laughs> is run. This a personal vendor. <laughs> well, he, he attacked. He attacked the bloke community. Oh, right. He called us joke in a bar. Wow. Now he's athletic in the sense that great cardio, and he obviously played AFL yep. professionally, so he's athletic. Yep. Great cardio, but not an explosive guy. Not an explosive guy. Not a national guy. champion either. Also hasn't won a national title for the 800 metres or a state title for the 100, 200, 400, 800 cross, cross country. country. Yeah, <laughs> he hasn't done that. He hasn't done that. Uh, so he's admitted to being an FO baby. So guys, get around the feed. Uh, the people are getting, I'll tell you what, I'll give him credit. The AFL, they're getting around him. They're wow. getting around him. So NRL, 
get around the feed. You go to more, go to your sports bet app, open it up now, go to more, go to feed, type in Denon or bloke, and it'll come up. Give us a follow. You can see everything that I'm punting on. Uh, you can copy my bets, and basically on Monday, we'll go through what I got right, what I got wrong. Uh, and as I said, NRL, we have to beat AFL. We can't allow these guys to beat us. And I... Also look. spray him in the comments. Also, just <laughs> Nepo, baby. And actually, don't, you know what? Don't go to his YouTube channel because that gives him engagement. <laughs> true, true. So it, you just don't go there. No, no, he, he's actually... Um, his stuff is really funny. He's, he's really good at what he just started a new podcast. So I'm keep, obviously the audience already knows this, but Shandor, you wouldn't know this. Yes. He's, um, yeah, he's got a big podcast in AFL and he's actually really talented. I think he's got 9 million TikTok followers. Wow. Um, and so, again, for my audience, like, tick, he's a TikTok guy. <laughs> 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 Fucking TikTok. Nepo baby TikTok guy. Like, there's yeah, a check, that's, that's checklist. A yeah, checklist of Derek. Like, <laughs> if you had, like, in the dictionary, you look up Derek, it'd be a TikTok Plus a Nepo baby. Um, no, he's, he actually is fucking hilarious. Really talented guy. But anyway, let's get into it. Eh? Roosters defeat the Knights. Joey Manu running for the record amounts of Jeez. metres. 370 metres in a game. Never just, been done before in an NRL game. the Aussie fullback in the coach's box and then that rolls in. The what Kiwi fullback just rolls in. Golden boot. Just has a game of Mate, he's, he must be such a headache for the Roosters because although Teddy is one of the greatest fullbacks of all time, like... He comes in and does that, and it's like, how, how do we get this guy more involved without ruining the structure of our team? Uh, he was absolutely incredible last night. Do you night. think he wants to play fullback? Yeah, 100%, yeah? I think. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's a big reason why he's most likely going to leave for rugby union yep. is to play a position other than you know sitting out in the centre. Being, essentially, being the main guy, I'd mm. assume, anyway. I'll ask you straight off the bat. Even though he said he's not going to... Teddy's contract finishes in 2025. Joey Minor's going next year. Do you reckon Joey Minor could be the Roosters' fullback in 2026? Maybe. And if that's the case, like maybe they're just like, look, go get your payday, get your million bucks, come back. We'll have a million buddy, uh, bucks ready for you when you come back or more. Uh, I will say what was really uh, you know, interesting about last night or really good for, for Joey is he had a try assist with some great ball playing. Yep. That's been the only knock on Joey. Yep. That's what... Com- that was my like biggest note. Like, yes, three hundred seventy meters, but we know he can do that. That's what he's always been like. We've always been critical about. He's like, yeah, he can run a million meters, but he hasn't really passed. But that ball to Tupo was hectic. Yes. was ridiculous. Yeah. Like him with ball playing. Oh, probably the best fullback in the comp. Yeah, probably. Like, well, you know, he's fighting with Tommy Trevojevic in yeah. that, which is crazy to think. So, mate, he was so friggin' good last night, and just, mate, his fitness. I would love to know, you know how like at training mm. where you'd have guys that, you know, most guys that were really fit at training were usually pretty fit on the field. But yep. what about like the guys you'd get at pre-seasons where they'd be terrible at fitness, but they'd have 40 runs a game. Mm. And I wonder whether Joey Martin is like really good at fitness or whether he's not that good at fitness, but he just has like match fitness. Like Hodjo, he was decent at fitness, but he'd get out on the field. Mate, he'd have like 30 carries. Yeah, I do feel like Hodges' carries were a little bit more strategic, well-timed mm. for him. It made, I just don't think you can pull off a game that Manu did mm. unless you are ridiculously fit. fit. So you reckon he's winning the fitness drills and that? 100%. Those fullbacks, think about the fullbacks you've been around the club. They're yeah. the guys who are at the top of the beep, Taz, I'd love top of the know. yo-yos. He has to be right up there now. Surely. Has to be. You can't be pumping that out. No way. Like the amount of efforts, effort on effort. And also, like he, when he hits in contact, you know how much energy you save if you just find your front straight away? Mm. Whereas if you're pushing through contact, that's your engaging. Well, you can talk about it way more than I. You're engaging different parts of your body. You're turning from aerobic to anaerobic. Yep. You know, you, you, I mean, you talk about it. More so contact. When, I think when you go into contact, it's underestimated how much energy you put into it. There's the sprint up and tire mm. But then when you're wrestling the whole time, trying to find your front, trying to get up, you're pretty much holding your breath the whole time because yeah. you're tensing. Yeah. Like that's what takes it out of you. So that back three, you got to ask, what have they been doing in the preset? That was a ridiculous. Yeah, like they're not winning that game. And that back three just dominated. Yeah, Suali'i, Tupo and Joey mm, Manu. Stupid. Very, uh, I was watching, I was like, I, I think they simplified their game plan, but it did seem very Panthers-esque where you just had a back three mm. that was just coming at you all day long. Like, and just every, they started every set on the front foot, yeah. the Roosters. It felt like it was strategic. I think, I mean, Cheese played out of his skin. Mm. Don't know whether so that was good. just his game, but it felt like it was like, all right, Cheese, you got a license, back three. They literally, it was like the whole team knew you guys are taking the first three runs. Well, every time I the mean, tides opened apart. I feel like I feel like that's why Cheese played well. Yeah, yes. because he he got good starts to his set, yep. which gave him license to run 
which is what his game is. Like he can he can pass all that kind of stuff, but he's a ball running number nine. Well, from the twentieth minute onwards, it felt like wow, Roosters are dominating through the middle, mm. absolutely dominating up until pretty much full time. But that was started with those three just starting the set. With Super dominant, ridiculous. Um, I will say it was interesting watching, and don't get me wrong, I did think the Knights forward pack did well to fight back into it, but you, it was almost youth versus experience where the first 15 minutes, Knights forwards was hyper-aggressive, yeah. big oh, shots. Oh, 100%. And then the veterans just said, look, okay, if you want to do that for the first 15 minutes, but can you do it for 80 minutes? Mm. And the big dogs were like, like for example, the older forward pack of um, the Roosters – they may not be as young and as explosive as the other forward pack, but what they can guarantee is we're going to go at 8 out of 10 all game long. Yeah. So you're 9 out of 10 right now, but you're most likely going to drop down to a 7 out of 10 because you're more, less experienced than us. And I think we did witness that with the, the Roosters That forwards. was the difference between the two teams. I felt like, mm. look, uh, if, I believe if Ponga didn't get injured, definitely could have been a different game. I mm. thought he was adding so much. Oh, yeah. But towards that back quarter of the game, you felt that Roosters knew – and we're in a position to just finish the game off. And Knights started to get a little bit frazzled. Their mm. ball play was off. But I agree. The way the Knights came out, the forwards. Wow, they look, I mean, if you can do great. that for 80 minutes. I thought it was a cracker game. I actually yeah. loved watching mm. it. Much better than I thought it was going to be. Um, Roosters. Oh, we've spoken about it so much on the potty. But like <laughs> this Kiri Walker situation is bizarre. So basically, and I actually got a bit of pushback on this when I was speaking about it. But I was a, few, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, Kiri by himself isn't the problem. Sam Walker by himself isn't the problem. When they play individually, they're good. It's just when they're together, mm. it doesn't seem to to kind of um, to work. And a lot of people are like, you're kidding me. Kiri's passed it. Ever since Sam Walker's gone down in the last game and a half, Kiri's been outstanding. He's definitely not passed it. Like he yeah. was outstanding last night. And a big reason I, I feel is because Connor Watson is definitely second fiddle in that relationship. Yep. He's just like... Kiri, you tell me where to go and I'll be there. And I think that's just what Kiri needs or vice versa. That's what Sam Walker needs. He yeah. needs another look, look at the Rabbitohs game. There was no Kiri in the Rabbitohs game and Walker was uh, like one Incredible. of the best on ground. Mm. And so it's like, unfortunately, Robbo, and look, maybe he makes it work by the end of the year so that that could happen. But he has this tough call of like, maybe I need to make the hard call of like, it has to be one of those boys' teams. They're both really good. I just don't know which one I give it to. They won a premiership with a traditional halfback. Mm. Name a team that has two live wire, mm. high output, high supporting players. Like they're runners. They're ball yeah. runners. And yeah. I, like you said, I love Kiri. I love, but together you need someone to play second fiddle. You need someone to be a traditional halfback who sets up plays, who has a kicking game, and lets the other just have a bit of a license. Mm. So, well, even even Munster plays second fiddle to Hughes. Yep, but. In a way, like when I say second fiddle, I'm not talking about his importance. Roles. Exactly. Yes. Like, so Munster is like, you you get us around the park and then I'll inject myself yep. when when I want to. Whereas when you look at Kiri and, and Walker, it's like, who is, who's getting him around the park? Like, is it Walker's job? Is it Kiri's job? Whereas when one of them is out, whether it's Walker out or Kiri out, it's extremely clear who's getting around the mm. park. It's, it's Kiri's getting around the park or Walker's getting around the park. So it's uh, it's a... Like, I genuinely believe the Roosters have too much headaches. Like, mm. too much headaches as in too many headaches, sorry, of selection, you know, mm. problems. Mm. Like, they got too many guns. Mm. they got they got Manu sitting in the centres and you're sitting there going, how do we get him involved? Because Teddy's our fullback and Teddy is a higher work rate fullback. And so you go, well, okay, maybe we should bring him in more, but then our structure goes out the window. He's not going to be out sitting out at the centre. And then you've got two guns in Walker and Kiri that could play. You've got Sandon Smith, who was a gun half, but hasn't been forced to play in the halves. You've got Connor Watson, who's a great utility, but you know Victor Radley can also fill that role in 13 and play 80 minutes. Like, it's almost like too many things to select And from. even Cheese, as we mentioned, you felt like, was he pushed into a position where, hey, we want you to be a hooker. Yeah. But then, hey... Like his passing game solid, but give him free yeah, reign. Yeah, Just let him range. go. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really it's one of the better performances by the Roosters considering the players they were missing. Um, I mean, I, I feel like they could have iced things a bit more often, uh, but it was a good bounce back for the Roosters. Like we have to remember, they got beaten by the Dogs last week. What do you think it was a reflection of? A uh, good sign for the Roosters or a better sign for the Knights? I'm, I sort of think it was a better reflection for the Knights how they play. I don't know if the Roosters winning that game the way they did really was like, oh yeah, that's that was great from the Roosters. I felt like considering the situation, it was better for the Knights. 
Oh, so you think the Knights come out of that game looking better than the Roosters? I think so. Really? I yeah. oh, see. I'm the opposite. I'm not. I'm not, a, I'm not really stoked with the way the Knights played, mm. but I don't think I sit there and go, "Man, the Roosters were well beaters." That like they really should have probably put it on the Knights a bit better than they did. I mean, Knights completed at nearly ninety percent. I think that really helped them. Mm. So that was their saving grace. But it was a lot closer than it should have been for the Roosters. Yeah, I mean, they were missing. So who were they missing? The Roosters. Dom Teddy, Young, Tom, Teddy, Sam Teddy, Walker, Sam Walker, Teddy. Um. So like three key yeah. players there Like literally key players If the Knights um, Okay we'll put it this way If the Knights were missing Kalen Ponga Frizzell And one of their key starting halves Yeah that's true I think you don't look at it Because then who did Roosters replace, yeah, replace it with, with it. And it's, crazy. it's like you, did, you almost forget And yeah, also yeah. That's not fair either, Roosters have probably the best roster in the comp Yeah Like the Knights if That's they lose three, what I'm leaning If they on, lose like, three players They're gone The expectations for the Roosters are yeah, see, I don't have those expectations anymore, really. Mm. Um, I did at the start of the season. Uh, I, I've, I think they need to work back towards that. Um, see, I'm actually... I thought the Knights did really well to fight back in the game, but, mate, some of the moments in that game where they were just just decided to walk... Like, when Kalen Ponga made that oh. break, mm. the game is on the line. KP pulls something out of nothing. There were five players around him that just kept walking. Mm. Like, didn't even get into a jog to get after him. And then, so you get that play. They keep managed to hold the ball. They go down there. The game is literally on the line. We're talking about the last minute of the game. And Adam Elliott takes a run, makes a half-ish no. break. And Hastings just, is just stops, just walks. Just mm. watch Adam Elliott run past him. And he's just walking. Now, uh, Kai Pierce paul uh, Paul, Paul. Yeah. Pierce Paul. Pierce Paul. Pierce Paul. <laughs> KPP. <laughs> I can forgive him because he's in his six NRL game for not pushing up with Adam Elliott. And also you could maybe you argue he had to keep his width. But I, I was really surprised with Hastings like just watching Adam Elliott run past him and not even – like I'm not saying he definitely would have got there or whatever, but even just jogging after Adam Elliott because Adam Elliott turns around and looks for the offload. No one's there. Mm. And they're attacking the line. And I, I just think that like those two moments – that's really concerning for me with the Knights. Like, the fact that, like, the game's on the line. You're at home and you've got blokes making half breaks and breaks and no one's, no one's running. Again, it's not, it's not the fact that, like, if KP made that break and they weren't quick enough to get to him, yeah. then you go, okay, that's just, all right, timing didn't work, whatever. But, like, if you go and rewatch the, the footage of KP making that break, there's players that watch him run past them. Mm. Just, that's, that's definitely concerning. an attribute that's missing from the halves at nights. We spoke about the uh, skills that, say, a Walker and a Kiri has. You miss that support play from the Knights half, especially, unfortunately, Hastings. Yeah. Like, that's just not in his wheelhouse. He's, you know, he wants the ball, he does his thing, but in terms of support play, you could probably call that an extra effort, but oh, those are the mate. little things that are probably well, missing for the Knights. Mate, the, the last one, unfortunately, for Hastings, I, I, I really thought was poor. I really thought... I'm Caelan Pong a shadow if I'm in that well, team. Not, not that one. So that one, he, it wasn't on his side, but the one where Adam Elliott, yeah. at the, right on the buzzer, yeah. Um, if you, yeah, just watching it and seeing... Hastings just like stands still whilst Adam Elliott runs past him. I was just really, I was surprised because like Hastings, although yeah, you're right, not known for his support play, yep. but he's also not he is known for his effort plays. Like yep. he, he usually makes his effort plays. I was actually quite um, disappointed with the halves last night for the Knights. I just think like some of their kicking decisions uh, when the game was on the line, there was like just a random bomb and, and di it was a bomb in the middle of the field that didn't even give the chase chasers enough time to get there. Mm. And then a, like a lot of the time they were. Um, they weren't squaring their defenders up. Like, there's a lot of side-to-side -side stuff, and they'll be running overs line and giving no space for their outside men. Um, so there's a lot to work on for the halves at the Knights. I was, I was genuinely, like, surprised at... Like, if there's one thing that Cogger and Hastings can do, it's square up defence. We yeah. know they can do yeah. that. It's what Cogger did in the grand final. Yeah. And we know Hastings can do it. Like, he was a big part of that 10-game run. But I, I thought they were... Um, yeah, I didn't, I, it definitely wasn't their best game last night mm. in the halves. Uh, for the Knights. Uh, just quickly back to the Roosters. What about Gus on the oh, edge here? Was, that was <laughs> his best game in a long time. I mean, Great how, game. How, mm. how much, you don't realise what you've got until it's gone, but how much have the Roosters missed a great line runner on their edge to give their outside men a bit of space. Especially on that side, like with who's, who you got your finishing on the line. Yeah, yeah. Like his impact, not only with the line running, but just having some powerful body out there. Like he, That was definitely his best game in a long time. Yeah. If he's back, it's going to do wonders for the Roosters. Even before last night, I was 
I wasn't sure if he'd probably keep that spot. There's been that second row for Roosters. There's, people have been in and out oh, with injuries right. and stuff. Revolving door. But he keeps that spot now. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for Mate, sure. I've got to say it. Some of the calls last night oh. were so bad. <laughs> <laughs> what about the what about the May one where he challenges it? Oh. And like rightly so, it, it did come out backwards. Yeah. Then the Knights player knocks it backwards to his own try line. They call it a Knights knock on. That was ridiculous. And there's a video like you're watching a replay of the Knights guy knock it back. Like you're literally watching it. And even the commentators were like speechless. Going, even what? Even it, the ref. Even the ref. Yeah. Said to the bunker. Oh, so so Roosters ball. Like you could tell he was surprised he was by the like, call as well. What are you watching? Yeah. Then to make it worse, to make up for that call, they call a friggin' obstruction on Radley and you're yeah, like, what? That was soft as. <laughs> what are you talking? And, and then like, just crazy. And then like this, a uh, bunch of other calls. Then the Angus Crichton that they called a knock on. Where, oh yeah. So he, he fumbles it, but yep. doesn't touch anyone. And then he hits it. It goes back like five meters mm. and it doesn't bounce back. It literally goes back. I, I thought the refs had a, the, yeah, I didn't think it was the best ref game. I, I know, like, you know, we don't like to be too negative as refs, but I, we, we talk about players' performances. When it comes to performances, I thought it was pretty poor last I, night. I didn't think the Knights got much in the last five minutes as well. It looked, oh, man, they were very lying slow. all in the rock. Yeah. And they just didn't have – just, they just wouldn't call it. They just wouldn't call it. And now, look, to be very, very clear, though, the Knights lost themselves that game, though. Yeah. That yeah, was 100%. not the yeah. ref's fault. Yeah. The refs weren't great and didn't give them some calls, but – it was effort areas in key moments that lost them that game, unfortunately. Um, What's your thoughts on that? Um, I thought this was the first time that I'd really had it brought to life and the commentary team threw a little assist in there, but that uh, obstruction call um, on the line running oh, outside I'm Kiri, to obstruction. So what about that, though? Like, strategically, 100%, knowing what we know internally and the strategy, there's no doubt that halves are now oh, for sure. sitting right inside on the ball player and then as they work out so they're gonna have to fix that because that that's was, a, that's that, a cheat code that was so interesting for me not having played nrl yeah. listening to that analysis i was like wow so but firstly if you are in that halfback position you're always setting that guy up i mean i could speak for the storm system on your mm. inside shoulder right but the flaws with that is you can get beat but you work in work out to the system but now if you pitch yourself on the ball player and you work out it's almost impossible for that line runner to do his job and hit the inside shoulder. So they've hacked it. Yeah. They're going to have yeah, to address it. And if oh, that starts happening. Mate, oh, it's get, it's, we're going to say way happen. more of I'm it. I'm starting yeah. to hate the obstruction call because like players are just looking for it. Yep. Like they're constantly looking for it. Like we're talking about some of the fittest humans on earth, like most explosive, like some of the best balance in contact literally on earth. And they're getting bumped over by little touches and that. <laughs> but the halves have hacked the system now. That, that's what it's I'm clear. saying. Like, gonna, you're going to have to change they're it. They're looking for it. Like they're looking for that yeah, obstruction. And it's not hard. It's not hard at all. And I, like, I don't know how they're going to fix it, but I hope we can get to a point where if the defender doesn't make a genuine effort to keep moving his legs, like doing those ones and like that, it, put it this way. As soon as a player does like that, I'd almost be willing to go, you don't get the penalty. Mm. Because that's not how you would naturally fall if you were genuinely trying to get to that. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, don't, I know what you're saying. If I you've just, got enough wherewithal to put your hands up like that. Yeah, you've milked it. You've milked it. You would never do that. If you got hit, there's no way you would be able to milk it. If like you're trying get to, hit in contact. Yeah, if you're trying to track like a player out like that and you're genuinely trying to get there... Mm. You'd be your arms would be down here, yeah. and you, and if you do get knocked over, it'd be you'd be getting shouldered over, and you'd be falling over like that. Yep. As soon as your hands go like that, you haven't made a genuine effort to get yep. out the back. It's that simple. Honestly, like I know that's a very like I get that that's not a, a blanket rule, but geez, I tell you what, it's a pretty good indication yeah, as to whether it's but getting milked. But that's what's milk lacking. Milk. The I don't know, you know, bunker and referees, they're not going to have that the knowledge experience to, yeah, and knowledge. Know. But I mean, where do you go? I think it gets too technical. The first thing that comes to mind is. In that ball play, in that play where they're running a block with the lead runner, if you start inside and then you work out and you get obstructed, well, then that should be enough to say, well, it's not an obstruction. You you're deliberately did that. Yeah. But I don't know. Is that too hard to police on the fly? It's too is hard it too to police. too technical? I don't know. Like, think, what is the body like? Let's say there's a body in front of you. I guarantee we all do the same thing. What, what's the body language you do to get around that body? You go, you go like that, don't you? You dip your shoulder. Like, let's say there's someone in front of me right now. And, I, and I'm trying to get to his right, my left. I would dip my right shoulder to get past him like that. Mm. How often do we ever see defenders that, are, that get obstructed 
dipping their right shoulder to get across to that guy at the back. Mm. Literally never. Yeah, Literally if you see never. an opportunity, you're taking it. That's where it's at. Yeah, and so yeah, like it's it's getting to the point where it's just like, like while we're on rules, but I've got one more that stood out, which you know I might be a bit disconnected, but the dropout when it got called, it's like there's balls in the bucket. <laughs> oh, that was good. Was that? that was great. So that's oh, that's unheard of. You've got to actually go and collect your own balls, otherwise, too bad. And that was the extent. Apparently, they've been told all year. There's two balls. There's two buckets. You got to go and get the ball if you in can't like, see. In the heat of the battle, too. In the heat of the battle, too. It's like, that's mate, a G up. come on, like, <laughs> like I, I'd understand if they'd been told repeatedly to do that, but like, I highly doubt, like. You might get told once before the season starts. Yeah. If you want, you can get the balls out of it's the bucket. It's on you, sprint to the bucket and get a ball <laughs> it's, or it's, the, it's the first time I've heard of it. I anyway. feel like he yeah. just shit himself when that um, alarm went off in the whole stadium. It's like, yeah. oh, you've got to pull the penalty. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's no yeah. lenient. I, uh, like the ball in the bucket one, it's like, sh- surely it should be on the, <laughs> the ball boy to get it to you. Like, um, anyway, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, so with the Knights, like I- I've got mixed feelings about the Knights because I agree with you. Yeah. They showed a lot of grit to just like hang in there and yeah. be in the game because there was a period there where the Roos were just rolling over them. Um, but it's just those key moments where they just had no one chasing through. Mm. It's just bizarre to me. Some positives for the for the Knights. Um, Kai Pierce-Paul, um, KPP. He's an athlete. Outside eh? of that one, you know, could have been supporting Adam Elliott. Uh, outside of that, he was phenomenal. Yeah, he looks good. Far out, he looks good. Exactly. And we're starting to see, like, you know, for the start of the year, he was just getting through all the tough stuff, doing all the hard, the hard yards. But what's so exciting about him is once he gets confident to add in all the extra stuff that he actually is known for, mm. like imagine KP knowing when he gets the offload now how hard mm. it's going to be to stop that combination. It's been quick. Like, it's only for round, round six. Mate. And he didn't play round one. He didn't play round one. He's in his fifth game. That would that would have been his fifth, fifth game, game of NRL, and probably his fourth game starting. And he's yeah. he's like still a relatively young footy player too. So yeah. it's not like he's coming from Super League and he's twenty eight years old. Like we're talking like a twenty three, twenty four year mm. old. Yeah, so Ridiculous. he's a gun over there. He wasn't like yeah. So I think he was a gun initially. Had a bit of a quiet year. Gotcha. And then so he's come over here. But I um mate. If he, if he keeps on this trajectory, yeah. he'll be one of the better uh, back rows in the competition. Yeah, proper like, athlete. Oh, my God. And he's enormous. Yeah. He's so oh. big. He's taller than Dom Young. Really? I'm pretty sure. <gasps> well, he's as tall. He when, did look tall. I mean, he's taller Socks than the Sai Fidi brothers. Are, yeah. Ridiculous. Like, he's taller than the yeah, Sai Fidi brothers. Fucking massive. Um, so, that, that was some positives. Uh, what about... I thought Leo Thompson had some good moments. Yeah, he had some yeah. great work. Mm. I love the battle he had with uh, Lindsay Collins, I think. Mm. Um, what that, about in, so he had some great like tough moments in the first half was with, with Lindsay Collins as you said but in the second half when I think it was Manu put a kick in to the in goal and Leo Thompson was back there to, to clean it up yep. and then also he yeah. did a cover tackle as well um, when maybe Joey Manu or someone made a bit of a break coming out of their own end uh, so yeah Leo Thompson I thought he was good um, Terrell May yes oh. Oh. Real good. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen someone have a line break assist and then a try assist in the same. In the set. same like and just to, like what Sorry, I loved a fl- about a prop. What, what I loved about that from May is like, so he has this silky hands hits mm. Radley on a great unders line, and then the just the footy IQ to go. Oh, I'm not going to track back into the middle. I'm going to go stand out in the centre. Mm, that was. Think what, how smart that, that is. Oh, that sequence of events was unreal. Like, think so about good. how how footy intelligent that is for a front rower. Like, okay, if we were all playing front row, what would have we done? Gone straight to the middle of the field. Back to position, yep. yeah. Straight to the middle of the field. But he's gone, no, no, there's no one out there. There's no center out there. I'm going to go track out to the to the center and be that connecting man between uh, who, who did the tip on? Was it whoever tipped onto him was great hands. But then, yeah, just easy hands to Tupo a lot. Mate, Terrell May, like we, we spoke about last week. Um, very surprised that he only got 20 minutes last week, but didn't he show last night? Like he's fast becoming as important as Lindsay Collins. I'd still say Lindsay Collins is the most important in their front row. Um, obviously, Hargreaves is there, but I'd say right now, when it comes to actually, you know, um, perform, like Hargreaves brings something intangible, of course, that you can't measure. But when it comes to actual performances, You'd say Lindsay Collins is probably at the tippity top, but I tell you what, Telmo's getting real yeah. close yeah. to being as important. Do you feel like that game was organic, though? Again, I felt like that was a little bit strategic, like something had been said. It was, mm. felt like there was a bit more of a license for him to, to yeah, play to a different run. way, yeah. you know? Mate, he, um, he is 
genuinely special. And he's got to be an Origin player. Smoky now. Like I think the biggest question I would have in regards to Origin, and he'd be a Smoky for for New South Wales, mm. is just the pace. Would he be able to keep up mm. with the pace of that game? Because he is such a big boy. Um, and I, I'm just, I'm, I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe he would keep up with it. I don't know. But in regards to like, does he have the size, the strength, the skill set? I think he does have yeah. all that for Origin. Like I think, he, does he have the mongrel, everything? I think he does. It'd just be, the, I guess. And he clearly question. has like the mental toughness because in round one, he just wouldn't come off the field. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And like he's played big minutes heaps of times. Mm. So I think that like. I remember he said to, uh, said to you, I know this is New South Wales Cup. But when he was really overweight, he was still playing 80 minutes for Blacktown. Yeah, and he was like in the 120 middle. keg or yeah. something yeah, like wow. that. Yeah. So he, he's a he's an athlete. He's an athlete. So, mate, I think that that game definitely has just put him into origin conversation. Now, I think he's still in the smoky chat yeah, yeah. tier. I agree. But mate, imagine him coming off. If, if, if he could keep up with the speed, him coming off the bench with a couple offloads through the middle... I, be pretty I love the idea, and especially because prop is such a point of contention with New South Wales at the moment. Mm. Only Payne Haas is really locked in, I would yeah, say. Yeah, Payne Haas definitely locked in. And when I say speed, I am i don't necessarily mean, like, could his fitness hold out? What I mean is genuinely, like, sp- like speed of the – you know how quick it is. Yeah. Could play the balls. Oh, right, like, yeah. right. um, but, mate, you could go much worse than getting him in that I like blue shirt. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like mm. it. Um, yeah. he, he, you know, he loves the tough stuff. He would get amongst it. He's got a bit of, he's got that extra bit of magic in him if you need it. Mm. Um, yeah, and also that you know breaking up of tempo coming off the bench, like with that offload. Mm. Sometimes you just need a guy to cut, like what Junior Bolo did for the Eels the last couple of weeks when he came off the bench, just a couple of offloads. Mm. All of a sudden the game is just spread wide open. So yeah, I reckon he's he's going to be a smoke because at the moment you'd have Payne has locked in. You've got RCG Junior Bolo. Um, Jake Trevojevic may be in the front row. He definitely has a point of difference. Mm. Yeah, he so he, something different, yeah, that's so. what I mean. Like that, that little point of difference that maybe... But I would say only Paynas is locked in out of them. Oh, Paynas, I'd say is the only one yeah. locked in yeah. for sure. Yeah. For sure. And also, he just doesn't miss tackles. I, I don't know what his stats are like this year, but last year, I'm pretty sure he missed like four tackles yeah, all year. he barely misses tackles. No, yeah. I'm really excited for Telme. Anyone, seen, anyone else seen out for you guys in the, the, the match? Oh, okay, let me think. Um... Man, I tell you what, I'm spewing about that. Uh, the no try we were talking about before with Gagai. Oh, how man. good was it to see vintage Gagai? Mate, that, that, he, was he well. yeah, that was Queensland Gagai. Gagai. That was Queensland Gagai. That was Queensland Gagai. Gagai. Gags, yeah. That was Origin yeah. Gags. Just yeah. go on, little shimmy, shimmy, little shaking, shake. Yeah. That like almost awkward footwork, like where he's kind of like jumping all over yeah. the mm. place. And against like you know, Tupo's not a bad defender either. Yeah, I thought um, also. Um, I thought Hetherington had a good game too. For, yeah, for hasn't he just like fully just. Brought his game back down to a point where just really good, consistent foot. He doesn't have the brain explosions he had mm. in the past because he hasn't had a 10 in the bin in, in a while now. Since the – there was a really bad one maybe a year ago, but, yes, yeah, since then it's been pretty clean. Yeah, so, look, I don't think so, – so when you look at the Roosters all the nights, I don't think you can walk out of that game going, oh, we're back, we're, we're, no, we're on. No. But at the same time, I don't think you walk out of the going, oh, that was a bad performance by both teams. Like, I don't think – Either fan should be sitting there going, oh, you know, we're done, our season's over or whatever. I think Knights fans will be really disappointed, though, with the fact that the game was there to be won if yes. a few extra efforts had been made. Mm. Um, from Rooster's perspective, I guess the big the, the thing that may excite you but also get you a bit nervous is, like, the, the style of footy they played, like, is, was, is different to what they've been playing the last few weeks. So do they go all do they go all in on this now and go you know what quick play the balls through the middle get cheese you know more momentum and and lose a bit of the structure that they've had recently it's going to be a oh, tough balancing act for like the it'd be tough to be Robbo right now yeah like, like which direction do you go seriously. in seriously yeah. because they looked they looked so much better than they have looked in attack um, for sure uh, at I think times. The, I, yeah I'd be sticking to that formula for a little bit sure I, I reckon too mm. just guys let's just go real simple quick play the balls through the middle and just anything off the back of that and see how you go. I, um, I, I wonder who they'd pick if they had to come down to it after Walker or Kiri. Like, it's, tough. Not a, it's a tough, tough one. Don't forget, uh, <laughs> yeah, Matty Burton is our hungriest player. Use code BURTON for free delivery. That's B-U-R-T-O-N for free delivery on menu log. So it's basically like going to the joint, getting the feed, but you get free delivery and it's in your house. It's unbelievable. Don't forget, Wade Egan's, uh, Wade Egan's performance is, is our LDV T60 power play of the week. The LDV T60 has 160 kilowatts of grunt, which makes it one of the most powerful utes in its class. 
Um, notable players off contract. Uh, Daily Telegraph has revealed notable players off contract at the moment with hidden clauses in their contract. Now that's... Well, I, I put the word hidden in there. It's probably a bit dramatic, but it's... When I look at the squad <laughs> list on, on NRL.com... So you're, you're a journo now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. sensationalising. I'm sensationalising. But it was Christ. hidden to me because, like, the squad list I usually go when I refer yeah. to it, it doesn't say all this stuff, but there's some interesting ones in there. Yeah. Okay, so here's some of the players. Fafita signed an extension last year, but the last two seasons are player options, so he can leave if he wants. Then you've got uh, Utsu Ikamanu. Contract till 2025, but has a clause that he can walk away from Tigers if they miss the eight. Uh, that wow. becomes void if he plays two Origin games, though. So, uh, Brandon Smith, he has a player option that needs to be activated by May 31st. That is, that is like, the amount of places that need a hooker is actually mm. crazy. That's interesting. Um Finny Fuaki, no clauses, just on the open market right now. Blaze Talangi, no clauses, just on the open market, but negotiations to resign with the Eels have started, apparently. Uh, Helam Luki has an option in his favour to extend if he wants, apparently working out a larger extension with the Cowboys. I don't think he'll go anywhere. Joey Manu, all but gone to Union. Lomax being granted a release. Schuster being granted a release. Notable mentions, though. Sean Johnson, Hazleton, Whitehead, Rapana, Josh Papali'i, Nick Kotrick, Milford, Wallace, Bromwich, Nicolima, Dane Gagai. Townsend, DeBellin, Sua, and Sloan all are, uh, can uh, basically negotiate. There's Who's, big names there. Interesting, uh, yeah. Seriously. Uh, so, uh, Taruva as well also has no clauses. He's just on the open market as it stands. Who stands out there for you, Sandor? Oh, there's a few, like, good players that, uh, you know, like the Gags and the Papali'i and stuff like that, but even, even Raps, like, I wonder what these players, what their next step is for them. You know, they're getting to that sort of... Mm other end of their career i wonder you know where they could add value to another team mate i'll tell you if you need us like for example if i'm the heels i'm looking at what's going on with dan gagai mm. oh he yeah absolutely like if you could somehow get him for kind of cheap yeah imagine a lomax gagai center pair oh we've got pensini imagine you put lomax on the wing or even gagai on the wing mm. like that that back line all of a sudden let's say you could get sivo firing mm. lomax in the center bensini in the other center and Gags on the other wing. Yeah. That's and nice. And Gutho, Gutho at the back. And Gutho at the Holy back. Holy shit. That's nice. That's very nice. Mm. That, I mean, they haven't had a back line that, like that in, what, a decade? Mm. Oh, yeah. Like, it's been a long time since they had a back more, line yeah. that strong across the board. Um, I'd say, yeah, way more than that. Yeah, for sure. So, if I'm the Eels, I'm inquiring into what's going on with Gags. If, if they've got money in the cap, surely the Eels have got money in the cap. <laughs> well, they, they, they said they've been so... Uh, careful with their money in the last few years when it comes to big players like Reed Marnie and all and all that. So surely they got money at floating have around. I think they've yeah, got money. You'd have to. Yeah. Like because it's not like Moses or Gutho. Gutho didn't break the bank yep. at all. Didn't like he's actually I think he's on like seven hundred or something, which is you could argue Jeez. unders for Gutho. Mm. Mitch Moses maybe on a mill. Dylan Brown maybe on six fifty. Imagine how many clubs would kill for Gutho. Oh mate, one hundred percent kill for Gutho. Imagine him at uh, Raiders. Oh yeah. I can see, I would see, I reckon he'd kill it at Raiders with yeah. that forward pack. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, he would. I think the big one's for feeder, especially how bad the Titans are going. Scary, to like really scary for the Titans. Yeah. Because like when they're going okay, it's very easy for Tino and the boys to get together and go, boys, we're next up, got to stick together, let's build something here. But they're going this bad and then Tino's out for the whole season and you're for feeder and you're sitting there going... I want to win a premiership. Yeah, like, I don't. I don't see him sticking. I, I think it's very likely that he looks if they around. keep going like this, yeah, like oh, I think yeah, it, I they'll, they'll need to start winning footy games. Otherwise, imagine where the he Tino could end up. Thing adds in that element. The as ACL well. gone, because then the problem is if he goes, because Tino's doesn't isn't Tino have like five year option in his favour or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, but I think Tino's options are in, are in a few years. Yeah, yeah, but but if, yeah, if he goes, you you just know like Tino will eventually leave too. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, they oh god, they need to keep him. But and you desperately if, need to keep him, man. If you're for feeder, where could you land? It's like, god, like imagine if it's June and the Titans have won one game. Like, surely he's like, get me out of here. Yeah, he's done. It's just there's no point a player that good sticking around, slogging no. it out, especially when he's been there for a few years now and they haven't had success. Like mm. a Tino, you know, you, you could justify you're still playing red footy. You're the captain. Yeah, you're but the big dog without, on the big coin. Without those things. I don't know what ties you down. And you're on the edge there as an edge back rower, so you've got to hold your width. You're not getting the ball as much, whereas Tino's in the middle. He can just get through his work, enjoy his footy. Yep. Ooh, that's scary. Scary stuff. Where, where could you see Tino land? Uh, Fafita. Fafita landing if he didn't decide to re-sign. 
Hmm. I mean, the Raiders are really keen on him, but obviously they got Hosking. Um, on the edge, what team <sighs> would have money? Oh, I don't know if they, they don't have money, but imagine if you went to Melbourne. They yeah, would, I mean, they yeah. would probably won't have cash though. It's all what in about the just never Key on one side for feeder the other. The only problem is there's. Oh, I'd love it. I would well, love for feeder, but South resigned basically their whole team last year. I don't oh, know how okay. much wiggle room there is. Like, I, like after getting white enough. Sharkies. Yeah. Sharkies. Wow, for feeder and Nicara. Nicara. Oh. Mm. Scary stuff. Scary stuff. Jeez, imagine if they get Fanul Blake and. Feeder. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. The I tell go you what, forward there. There's a lot of clubs that would use for feeder. Oh, mate. 100%. Yeah. What about Brandon Smith? Eels make a play. Eels probably couldn't afford him. There's so many clubs that could use a good hooker yeah. like Brandon Smith. Like, so many clubs. Who who would you? Oh, well, yeah. There's Paris, a big one. Dragons. Dragons, Canberra. Um, Titans. Dragons. Imagine the cheese on the Gold Coast. Oh, my God. <laughs> Probably not a good idea, mate. Probably not. Jeez, I know you're watching, brother. What about? Stay away from Burley Hill. You won't make it out alive. <laughs> It'll eat you up the Bermuda Triangle and Burley Hill. Too. What about Holy. Brisbane? Brisbane? Nah, we got we got, oh, got um, Moser coming through. We got Moser coming through. Yeah, and Billy Walters, good. mate, like he's yeah. been pretty yeah, he's good. Solid. Oh, he's been great. He's been great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, there's plenty, plenty of players uh, off contract. What else has been going on? The door? What else has been going on? Anything... Any hobbies, any uh, interests outside of sport that you'd like to talk about, mate? <laughs> <laughs> any hobbies outside of sport? Man, I don't know, outside of sport. I've, I haven't been latching on to any conspiracy theories. I've just been getting around, same as you, I've just been getting around the fights as well as the footy these days. Mate, how good just is the fights sort of saying, boxing is well and truly back. So good. I mean, Saudi seems to be the new hotspot, but I'm geared up for all them fights. <laughs> Tyson Fury and the heavyweight battles that are going on. Will you get back in the ring? Oh, I'd love to. I really would love to. Even you see, there's a fair few boys getting around into fights at the moment. Even some of the AFL lads I know. So like they did, uh, they asked me recently to um, jump on a AFL card down in Melbourne. Yeah. Against um, his name's Jesse. Something. He's a big lad. Yeah. Uh, I was tempted. I just don't know how I'd go getting into a camp again. But man, I loved it so much. The camp is what like stuff that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like but you, you, do, you do love it. Like the thing for me is. I love the uncomfortable of it. You, you, it was so different to rugby league. Like yeah. you would know, not being in a team sport, being an individual. Yeah, you got one coach, but it's all on you. It's all on you. It was different I actually feeling. really liked. Yeah, it's how, a different how long feeling. do they go for? I know it's so it's different, but weeks. like yeah, twelve eight weeks. To twelve. Yeah, right. Yeah, and but the biggest thing was, man, I'm I'm a heavyweight, so like, I'm not a he traditional heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. You know, if so you were an actual like, boxer, you'd be stripped way down. Yeah, yeah. you'd go definitely cruiser weight, maybe less. Yeah but rocking up to a different gym every weekend. Oh, and like you get there, yeah, you spar there, you get there and then you just see these big Massive boys. 120 kilo lads. And, oh. and like you, you think you know about anxiety. I was saying this the other day, I had a conversation. Footy had nothing in comparison to even like Gladiator being on the duel. Yeah. And I think it was because my pride is on the line. Imagine I got up there in like Powerball and someone stepped me. Yeah. Like who cares about the whole show? I've just, it's not worth it because I've just embarrassed myself on live television. Imagine you, you get up and you, box, you get knocked out. That's, that's on, what I'm saying. That's, that As is, a man, yeah. is that on the top, getting knocked out 100%. in front of everyone you know? There's nothing 100%, worse. 100%, absolutely. So that feeling. And like, you just know fucking people on the internet <laughs> are just going to, like that have never stepped in the ring, that have never done anything, are just going to pepper you with that clip for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. There's and no just, more nervous adrenaline moment than fighting someone with the thought of you could potentially get knocked down in front of everyone. Completely knocked out. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, that's why, you know, it seems like a bit cliche, but genuinely anyone that steps in the ring is, is brave as anything. Yeah. It, even if they're the, the worst, the most gumby fighters you've ever seen in your life, mate, it is genuinely bravery. Like, 100%. So, and also, if you've ever been, if you've ever sparred, it's, it's a feeling that only can be replicated by sparring. Being gassed while someone's trying to knock you out, there's no other feeling in the world. Mm. Because it's just like, you, it, like in rugby league, if you're gassed and you let a try in, who, like you care, obviously you care. But in the long term, who gives a shit? If you're gassed and this guy's trying to knock you out, like that matters, <laughs> that fucking matters. But you know how strange it is, like you're fit as a fiddle and you go into the sparring all of a sudden, gone. whether it's the adrenaline dump or whatever, it's gone. Well, it's like, it's like when you've done a whole preseason footy, you get to round one, you're yeah, fucking yeah, gassed true. after that's 10 true. minutes. 
It must be the adrenaline dump, yeah. surely. But also, when you're fighting these heavyweights, I go in and I am lighter, I am faster, but all of a sudden, you just start going one punches and yeah, like yeah. trying to muscle it out. Yeah. And you're doing the same thing as them. That's what, that's what I hated. But I feel like there was a switch flicked when I actually had a fight. It was like, oh, you, you felt like you could relax. And oh, really? Yeah, you weren't as like, oh, so tense. Yeah, okay. So I did feel like that unlocked a bit of like, I don't know, just my technique and everything did changed. You, did you get a lot of confidence in... Because like, I think that a lot of people... They don't get me wrong. Getting punched by a boxing glove it hurts way more than it looks like. Like mm. those gloves make it look like it's this big cushion. It's not. Your no. it's, it hurts. But at the same time, you actually would be surprised at how how much of a punch you can take, mm. which gives you confidence to go. Okay, well, as long as I'm not an idiot and I don't, as long as I don't get gassed and I'm not an idiot, I probably shouldn't get knocked out. Yeah. Is that is that did that work for you or yeah, not really? Yeah. You, you, well, it just builds confidence. You get a few punches, like, oh, okay, I'm good here. Yeah, yeah, you I can build take up a that bit shot. of resilience. But the other thing is, your first go-to when you're getting punched is just this panic, like you stepping way too back, and you just yeah, realize, like, hey, yeah, yeah. if I just put my hands up, 16 ounces, but I'm sweet, punch yeah, me. But yeah. you don't realize that until a little bit longer into your journey. Yeah, or you're like you're pulling your head back, yeah. you're putting your you're chin in. You're all over the air. place and you're like yeah, trying don't, to avoid or everything. Like, yeah, or you're like like trying to pour out your, it was just literally the last thing, but you're trying to like stop their, their, <laughs> their uh, like arms from getting to you, which is leaving you exposed. Um, yeah, so, so you reckon you will? If you had to right now, yes or no, would you get back in the ring? I would get back in the ring, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I would. Who against? <laughs> well, I guess I guess you know you'd have to you'd have to take coward, a footy bro. player on. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking say their name, bro. You were spraying him before the show, bro. I would fucking flog him. No, I'm just joking. Never said that. Um, yeah, fuck it, oh, oh, mate. When you just accept what footy fight nights are, just enjoy it. Like, mm. you know, is it a bit messy? Is it as good as technically as the big boxes? No, but it's a bit of fun. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't, I don't get the. I understand the frustration with boxes where they feel like, well, this exposure be, could be given to actual boxers, but it's like, that's not how the boxing game works. No. It's prize fighting. It's not how marketing and business works yeah. either. There's, it's not, there's not an infinite pool of, sorry, there's not a finite pool of resources that if they weren't given to this boxer, this footy fighter, they were going to be given to this boxer. It's genuinely like, this boxer can generate this many eyeballs, therefore they get this amount of money or this amount of exposure. Um, if anything, if I was a boxer, like, yeah, for sure, there's that natural kind of, like, oh, are you fucking serious? I've worked for this my whole life and this yeah. guy gets it on the main card. I, I get that. That's a natural, you know, you, I'm sure I felt it in league as well. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? I'm getting on every footy card I can get on because that's be how you honest, build a profile. Like, without, the footy, without the footy players coming into the space, and I suppose Gallon's a great example, mm. These fight cards, No Limit Boxing, all this stuff really wasn't in existence. It wasn't a yeah. platform. I know that the Zoo Brothers have taken it to another level, but they, they really they created used the platform. Yeah. The, the, they but did. the Zoo Boys, obviously they had their name and their talent, 100%. absolutely. But they did it smart. They were yep. like, you know what? I will jump on a footy card yep. to get my name out there. And now he's one of the biggest names in there. And now we have the these fight cards where people are actually connected. Yeah. They are engaged. They are watching. So, what, like, Think about No Limit, for example. And... No Limit, I think they're the best in the business, put on the best cards, all that kind of stuff. And granted, obviously I'm mates with, with No Limit. But they get it. They get it. They get the mix of influence, social yep. media, marketing, exactly. the fighters. And you have to ask yourself, would, would No Limit be where they're at, being able to put these great fights on that you're seeing without Rugby League? No. No, absolutely not. So, and, and no, that's, not, that's not having a go at No Limit skill set at all. That's saying that's smart what they did. They'd say the same thing, it's, I reckon. It's, they leveraged. Mate, they leveraged. And it's smart. It's yeah. good. Um, like, think about how many fights we get. We've got Nikita Zoo coming up soon. Um, we got we got plenty of, like, how many fights over the last month like on that have been on Fox? Mm. So in the month leading up to the Zoo fight, there were four fights. Yes. Like, when, when was the last time you had that on Fox? Four fights in a month that you could, you know, watch. Now, granted, I understand there's been fight nights and all that kind of stuff, but I, I, I would argue that the last couple of years we've seen more fights on TV for us all to watch, whether it's No Limit or somewhere else, mm. uh, than, than in recent history. Maybe there was a time before, you know, I you know, started watching boxing as much as I did that had more fights on, but in my time over the last decade or so, um, we've had, in the past we have huge fights. Obviously we've had Horn, we've had Pacquiao, for sure. Uh, mundane, great, like all that. 
but the the amount of fights we're getting, I, it feels like it's more than it has been before. Mm. I, I, and look, boxing I agree. Fans, with, I agree with you because, and I'm not a I'm not really a boxing fan, but I well, boxing, agree with that. Um, we, we would have boxing fans that listen right now. Let us know in the comments yeah. section. Has the number increased? Because I'm more than happy to say to be proven wrong. Like I get it. There are people who are way more serious into boxing than I am. But it feels like to me as a guy, I wouldn't consider myself a casual. I consider myself just a boxing fan. I wouldn't consider myself a hardcore. But from a, just a boxing fan's perspective, it does seem like there's more fights being put on. 1,000%. Um, and with the stage now, the connection with KO, like yeah. it's got pay-per-views. We just, we didn't have, there was a long period of time. We've spoken about this before. That was not in existence. Well, you, you had it was, to, it was gone. You had to go to a pub to watch the main event fight because yeah. they didn't have it online. I mean, obviously you could watch it legally or whatever, but... Like you literally couldn't like buy the pay per view via an online streaming service only like two years ago. Yeah, three years ago. That's madness, isn't it? That's crazy. Think about to it, yeah. Even like Danny Green jumping up. I'll, I'll get around the Pedro and I don't want to butcher his name, but Travesky fight. Like, yeah, Travesky's a gun, mad mm. southpaw. Yeah, Pedro ex MMA fighter. Like one of our one of our best. We get around all them lads. Like I'm I'm keen to have yeah, a look I'm at keen it. as and <laughs> Pedro is probably earning the most he's ever bloody earned. Yeah. in the boxing game. Uh, in Australia, this is an Australian card. Like mm. so. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Can I just say one thing? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> see, see you next week. Um, um, you say the uh, pay per view thing, how crazy it was two years ago. Um, don't you think it's crazy that it was only 10 years ago we were watching footy games on delay? Don't you think that's like that is madness? What? 10 years ago? So yeah. what was that? 2008? About 2014, 2013. Which game? On so the Sunday four o'clock game was always, played at, was always played at three and it was delayed. And you had to like if you if you wanted to it might have been twelve years ago but it, maximum twelve years ago yeah and so the three o'clock game kicked off at, sorry the four o'clock game actually kicked off at three but they'd play it at four the ads would be so long and if your team sure? was playing I'm a hundred percent sure because wow. I used to go yeah. into I used to go into lockdown I'm so when South played at three o'clock yeah I'm trying to think too now mm. and that around that 2013 14 period for me. I kind of disengaged with the the game a little bit, so it's probably why I'm misremembering. Even though it would have been around before then, okay. So and the Friday night game that was always delayed too. Both games were played at seven thirty, and then they'd put the second one Ten, only twelve years ago. Yeah, guaranteed. That's bizarre. <laughs> That's exactly there's two people that have played in the NRL me. for not to not know <laughs> that is outrageous. I've Sunday never known afternoon that afternoon game. What time did I play? Yeah, I don't think it was um, four four thirty. Hey, you might be right. You might be right, That's bro. That's weird. I mean, you, you probably you definitely are. He's a fucking yeah, you are. You've Googled it. It just shows <laughs> you, like, you can be in it and you yeah. don't take it, you don't really take notice of that stuff. When you're when you're in playing NRL, all you're focused on is your game. Mm. Like, mm. you know, and, you know, whatever is around your game, the video session, whatever, you're not thinking about, like, is this played an hour later? Because it's not like you're going home and, like, watching watching the game again. Like, you're fully zoning 100%. out after the game. I'll tell you That's what crazy. else, I, this is a reflection of where I'm at. It may be in life, not in a negative way, but, um, bro, have you ever been to Costco? No, I haven't. <laughs> it's yeah. A, it's it's a, a, mate, this is, this, is, this is where I'm at. I'm getting hyped up about my weekend shopping. That's my outlet in life. But, bro, it's, a, it's is it wild mad? in there. And I recently, it? this is why I'm hyped up about it, because there's one where I live. But I went to one in America. Mm. Mate, the shit that's in there. Really? It's insane. You can get any, like, anything, anything bro, but in shit Costco. But you can't get either. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It blows your mind. And in bulk, you're like... Oh yeah, yeah. If you want fifty thousand toilet rolls, go to go to Costco. <laughs> bro, I went in there in really? America. We walked in there. We, we didn't. My mate didn't have his card, mm. so we sort of just walked in. They attack you because they got this new face scanner. What? And I'm I'm in I'm you in this kit face actually. Scan? Yeah, you get your face scan for to your go ID. In. Yeah, to go in at Costco in America. What, yeah. Are you buying it in wholesale or something? You got to have you got to have a membership. You can't just roll in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, we've walked in. They've told us to go to membership. Walked in. I'm in the the blue air locker kit. This woman's just run me down in the line just abusing me I'm like, oh, mate, i'll leave so it was a crazy experience, so so do you have to pay to be a member yeah you can't go there unless you're a member so so that's how they make their money back is you you subscribe to be a member yeah and then they probably go all right so we'll discount our prices x amount because like isn't their stuff like way cheaper yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, but yeah. it's also in bulk yeah okay it's in bulk Wow, that's yeah. because obviously I know Costco, but I didn't know you had to have a membership to be yeah. in there. I actually didn't know that either, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. And a yeah. face scanner, yeah. <laughs> we just cop that now. If you had said I need to scan your face in the year two thousand, you would oh. have been like, uh, no chance. Ten years it comes out, everyone's getting chipped up. Are you doing it? I think I think it'll just be like whatever the zeitgeist. Early is. Early days, then. 
Are you going to, would you be like, yeah, I'll do it? No, not now. No, nah. I don't think so. Like, whatever the zeitgeist is, like, everyone pretends like, you know, for example, things that happened that were bad in the past and they pretend like, I wouldn't have done that. It's like, no, nah, no. Nah. You, you always do what your culture mm. is usually socially acceptable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if that becomes socially acceptable, I'm sure I'll be like, oh, you know what? It's like, for example, like, yeah, our phones. like, they Or they it. force you into it. Like if you physically have to you go have to in somewhere it, yeah. or use it, then you're done. But like our phones, for example, like this, like this is a tracking device. Like we, like people that think, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this or sign up to that because I don't want them to have my information. Bruh, it is too late. You it know what I've noticed recently? Late. Like I don't, I don't carry my wallet anymore. It's done. Yeah, I, I don't I mean, have. A I haven't for ages. It's just cards on it's the phone. It's all digital. No cash. And so, like people, like people go, oh, you know, like I'm sure there's people in, like let's say in 50 years, the government has like overreached and they've got too much power. They're going to look back at us and go, oh, I never would have given my information to all of those social media platforms. I never would have carried that phone too around late. everywhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And they would have said they were different, but you're not. You're just whatever your culture is usually what the general populace thinks you will go along with and you can look at bad situations of that like you know you look at the world wars and you'd be like i can't believe this country did this but any big population can get brainwashed into doing anything like we're we're uh we're uh, what's the word um we're, we're herd mentality yeah yeah we're a herd mentality we like people try to like for some reason forget like we're animals when like humans are not some kind of weird different species that are like <laughs> obvious like that, that we're uh, uniquely above animal instincts we we are animals and so yeah i was um i don't know how oh yeah the face scans anyway who gives a shit okay <laughs> ca cash is the big one there like i got a it shows how times have changed i got a haircut and they only accept oh, i've seen that that's a sharp comb over you got yeah that yeah uh, it's normally a huge mess but anyway um they it was cash only and I was like, "Fuck, cash so, only." Oh, really? Yeah, a bit. Don't dodged. say, don't say where it is. Yeah, I won't say it. Um, but I, it, like, the fuck they'll get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I paid them fifty bucks, and they gave me fifteen dollars change. I walked out, and I actually thought, "What the fuck am I going to do with this?" Yeah. So I just went to Kmart, bought some socks, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, some socks. and because I was like, otherwise it'll be my wallet forever. <laughs> and then I was like lining up, and then they're like, "Oh no, you have to go to the cash area." So then I had to wait with the elderly people to pay in cash. It was outrageous, yeah. and, and you've got you've got, um, and we're getting into conspiracy areas here. But like, you've got people yeah. like, oh, this they're trying to get us into digital. You know, mm. they'll control our lives more. Oh, bro, it is too late. It's bro. over. Mm. It's over. Oh, yeah. If you think that you're gonna roll around, like, because like I, I did see people like going, oh, it's, you got to get cash out. Cash is king. Money is only what we all agree it is. It's just a piece of paper. Yeah. It's it's not connected to gold anymore. It's it's literally just a piece of paper. Like, for example, what's, what inherently, when I give you a $5 note, what is inherently means that's $5? Other than me and you agree it's $5. Nothing. Literally nothing. Yeah. It's a piece of plastic. And so, like, the people that go, oh, we're going to go digital, they're going to control us. Bro, they could control us regardless. Whether we go cash or digital, mm. it's over, bro. I agree it gives them more control, but I also, I don't want cash. But, it, but it, the <laughs> thing is, it, it doesn't give them more control because, like, Okay, cash. Let's say let's say a subset of the population goes. We're just going cash. How could you disconnect yourself from society enough to make it work? You couldn't. You just get railroaded straight back into the mm. like. It's too late, bruh. It's too fucking late. And what's funny is money becomes just numbers you punch into a computer, yeah. and it's it's endless. It's and, and all, like it's just yeah, it's just too late, man. Like we we are too connected digitally to un the cat's out of the bag. Mm. It's like AI, the cat's out of the bag, unless we regulate the shit out of it. But then some country will just go, oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna regulate it. And they're just gonna keep going down the AI path because they could you know, potentially use it to fucking dominate another country. So cat's out of the bag, we're done. <laughs> it's over, <laughs> pack her up. That's why it's called pack her up, pack boys. Up. <laughs> we're done. Um, but anyway, let's talk about a bit of fucking rugby league. Who you got, Melbourne versus doggies? Oh, mate, you know i got to back Melbourne Storm. I don't know if the dogs can go down there and get it done, so. You know the dogs have the best winning percentage against the Melbourne Storm? Yeah, well, team? especially in that um, era when they had a few good battles, but. They beat them last year down in Melbourne. Yeah. They're just down troops. I think Melbourne are going to pump them. Yeah. Yeah, they're paying 670. Oof. Yeah, I, wouldn't. I wonder what 13 plus is paying for. Just get on it just for a bit of fun. <laughs> um, yeah, Storm. Broncos, Dolphins. Dolphins paying 320. That is yeah, value. Value. Great value. That is juicy as shit. Mm. That I, is very juicy. I like Dolphins I with the that. start. Hey? I think the six and a half start. I like Dolphins with the start. I think it's going to be close as. Surely that six and... 
like six and a half, has, can that change? Can that go out? Oh, you can. That's what they put, but you can put whatever can you they, want. Can they change it? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That changes. Well, let me actually. It was six and a half. Let me. Because that's what I was going to sure. say. Surely it's not six and a half anymore. They're fucking paying three twenty. Uh, what the hell is? It'd be out to like ten, wouldn't it? Sorry, one sec. Just had the wrong. Yeah, three twenty. Surely six and a half is fucking is uh, massive unders there. If it's they're paying three bucks twenty. It is. I oh, say the line's eight and a half now. Eight and a half. Eight so and close. Half. I, my guess was ten. Mm. Um, eight and a half is juicy. Yeah, yeah, juicy, I'm, juicy, I'm, juicy. I'm all over that. Um, Broncos head dead for me though. Warriors v the Seagulls. Seagulls paying two seventy one. I know it's away in New Zealand. That's value as. I reckon that's that is bad. value. They could definitely get it done. Because like, you look how good their attack is. Yeah, I'm going Warriors head to head. Um, I actually did put a cheek. If you follow me on feed, as I said, guys, follow me on feed. I did put a cheeky bet on uh, Manly Seagulls thirteen plus. Pay, it was paying seven seventy five at the time. Ooh. The only reason why I did it is because like, let's say Warriors have an off night. We know. Manly, when their attack clicks, it yep. fucking clicks. Mm. Um, I have Warriors head dead, but a bit juicy there, that 13 plus for me. Um, but make sure to follow me on feed, guys. It takes two seconds, <laughs> literally two seconds of your time to press follow. And it, uh, it's actually a really good metric as well to continue our partnership with Sportsbet going forward. Dogs 13 plus is paying $21. Oof. Oof. <laughs> I mean, there's like essentially oh. 0.001 yeah. chance of that <laughs> happening. But okay, Eels versus Cowboys. Eels paying 234, Cowboys $6.61. I'm going to back Cowboys. They just can't get around the Eels at the moment, eh? Yeah, they're just without Mitch so Moses. Disappointing, yeah. Man. Yeah, so disappointing, uh, man. Rabbitohs, Sharks. Rabbitohs paying $3.70. Oh, that's... It's pretty juicy. That is With juicy. With everything going on at that club right yeah. now. There's a little juicy multi, I reckon, that's, that, all the, that's yeah, worth yeah, yeah. it Yeah, yeah actually, week. you're right. If you win, a juicy multi, if you win... Manly. Okay, no, no, you go Dolphins. Yep. Manly. Yep. Into Rabbitohs. Like... You're looking at it. That's a juicy That's man. Nice. That's a fucking very nice. I might actually chuck that yeah, on. Yeah, I'm gonna later. do it. It's paying thirty-two dollars. Oh, get around it, boys. Uh, um, okay. Uh, Sharks are dead for me though. Tigers, Dragons, dollar eighty-seven. Tigers, dollar ninety-seven. Dragons. I'm going Dragons. I'm Ooh. going Tigers. Yeah, I'm going Tigers. Okay. Raiders, uh, Titans. Raiders. Raiders thirteen plus for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Like, tight, like sad. I'm surprised <laughs> Titans are only 327 if I'm being yeah. honest. It's yeah, Raiders home ground I can't too. believe Raiders minus eight and a half is paying a dollar ninety. Like that's what are Raiders thirteen plus? Um, two twenty. Oh, take that. Chuck that in the multi. Yeah. Oh, that's not a bad. That's a bit juicy. Very juicy. Very juicy indeed. Um, if you add it to the juicy multi, you're getting seventy. Oh, stop it. 70 yeah if you, if you the three that we said before plus, plus that plus raiders 13 plus Bruh. you're getting 70 yeah so it jumped from 30 something to 70 yeah because it's 220 so you're it effectively welcome. doubled yeah <laughs> that's good that, that, that is very <laughs> very cheeky very cheeky stuff that um all righty that is us done and done pack her up boys make sure to give shandoriel a follow on instagram um anything else going on for you no <laughs> <laughs> that's very depressing very depressing uh if you're out west get it come come and join me i'm actually coaching the sessions too bros right if you're out west where, what's the where is it at again what's rouse the? hill just uh just down from the fiddler next to the brewery all the hot spots that everyone knows okay grouse Home of the hill, rhinos yeah. rouse hill rhinos grouse hill grouse hill grouse hill <laughs> Uh, so make sure to get in there, guys. Say hi to the great Shandor and uh, grab a case of bloke beer. Also, give us a follow on feed. We can't let AFL win, guys. Come on, let's be serious. No. Let's be serious. And as usual, I'll go and fuck myself. Thank you. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.